Hey Roamers, I'm Jamie. I'm Linda. And this is Roaming with Rosie. On our last episode, we shared with you how we were ready to hit the road for our location, independent life. What's different about Roaming with Rosie from some of the other full-time RV channels that you watch? Watch and find out. So what's different? Well, we're keeping a home base. Yeah, at our age, we know we'll want to go back to a home eventually, and without steady employment, probably wouldn't qualify for a loan again. We chose this older motor home over an expensive truck and an expensive RV. So we really didn't need the equity from our home in order to do this. Our plan is to be location independent. Which means we can work from anywhere, travel as much as we want, but still have that safety net of a home to come back to in case one of us gets sick or we get sick, sick of, of each, each other. other. <laughs> okay. There's no rules in RVing. This is your life. You choose what best works for you. Yeah, after years of turmoil, financial struggles, taking care of family members, we get to design our own path now. So my career resignation has been submitted. A 30 year career will soon be behind me. I was blessed with an accidental career that I absolutely loved. I got to work with amazing people from age 14 to 100 and every day was a pleasure to go to work. It gave me purpose and we accomplished so much that made the lives of others better. It's really hard to walk away. However, now it's time to focus on our next chapter. The last year and a half has taught us a few things. Yes, don't wait until tomorrow. There are too many people who wait for retirement to live their dream. Yeah, and too often it's just too late. The many seniors that I had the privilege of working with throughout my career told me to do the things that I want to do as soon as I can make it happen. Reevaluate your priorities and make it happen. Life is unpredictable, uncertain, and it flies right on by. Initially, we thought we wouldn't do this until we'd seen more of the country. Right, but this crazy housing market is actually giving us an opportunity to erase our mortgage altogether if we're open to moving to another state. We've been exploring New Mexico. And today we're going to show you one of the areas that's absolutely charmed us with its culture, its history, its friendly people, and it's beautiful. And it's right off the I-10 freeway giving us easy access to head out in the motorhome. Mesilla, New Mexico is located just a few miles away from the Las Cruces KOA that was to be our base camp for the week. We couldn't wait to get out and explore, and Mesilla seemed like a great place to start. Some very important U.S. historical events have occurred in this community that's along the Rio Grande and just north of the border of Mexico. The name Mesilla is first found inscribed on a map in a report to the King of Spain by Don Juan de Anade, dated 1598, describing his quest for converts in gold. Mesilla translates to Little Table. Back then, the Rio Grande was a major river. Spring and summer floods from melted mountain snow often overflowed the banks. They chose this campsite because it was a little higher and it didn't flood. The Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo was signed in 1848, ending the Mexican-American War. Mexico ceded parts of present-day Arizona, California, New Mexico, Texas, Colorado, Nevada, and Utah to the United States, who in turn paid Mexico about $15 million. By the early 1850s, Mesilla was established as a colony, although there continued to be a boundary dispute between the U.S. and Mexico that arose from the treaty. It was finally settled in a document known as the Gadsden Purchase, which was signed on November 16, 1854. The Mexican flag was taken down, and the U.S. flag was flown. We first arrived at the plaza of Old Town Mesilla about 4.30 on a gorgeous September afternoon. It was like visiting a movie set for an old western. Anchoring the little village is the Basilica of San Albino. The original adobe church was first built in 1855 and a new church was rebuilt in 1906. It became a basilica in 2008. We're in the old town of Mesilla and the actual old town and this basilica 
the original basilica In the 1880s, the booming little town attracted much business and commerce. However, it also attracted a young Henry McCarthy, who called himself William H. Bonney. Eventually, lawmen began to refer to him as Billy the Kid. This adobe building with 18-inch thick walls at one time was the Doña Ana County Courthouse and Jail. The Kid was jailed here and sentenced to hang. He was transferred back to Lincoln County for the hanging. However, he managed to kill two of his guards and escape. But he was later killed by Sheriff Pat Garrett where he was hiding near Fort Sumner. This building on the plaza is the oldest brick building in New Mexico. It was built by Frenchman Augustin Morin in 1860. He was murdered by robbers in 1866. His heir came from France to claim the property, but died in 1868. The next resident was also murdered by robbers. As I strolled by a pecan shop that a couple of customers were leaving, they started commenting about their disappointment that everything was closing for the day. I was walking along with a camera, so they started chatting with me. Then they insisted I must follow them to the Double Eagle restaurant. They seemed very knowledgeable about the area and recommended this restaurant for several reasons. Besides the fact that the food and service were excellent and its place in U.S. history, it's haunted. Well now, I've got a camera, so I'm in. Yeah, I took Dexter over to the Town Square Park and I could see her walk off around a corner with some strangers. Yeah, but I texted you. Yeah, like 30 minutes later. <laughs> it was really cool. As I walked inside, I was transported to the 1800s. The first room was the original parlor of what once was the hacienda of the Mays family. The original thick adobe walls here keep the inside at a comfortable temperature regardless of the season. This building has been the home to Mesilla Valley's most prominent families from 1849 through the 1960s. I asked the hostess at the front entrance a few questions and she immediately offered to take me on a tour. This is such a friendly place. Did we already say that? So our bar is right here. So this chandelier was in the Godfather too. No way, really? And then, so this whole little like wood structure right here is from France. And the, all the chandeliers are from England. Like it's the Godfather. The bar was actually made in the 1800s. And um, there's like a spot over there that really the kid, like that was his spot. And he like engraved his initials whoever he was, like, was with at the time. Um, so the bar was created in the 1800s and flown in on a plane from Chicago. Wow. So that's the bar. Um, it's beautiful in there too. Yeah. So a long time ago, obviously, it wasn't a restaurant, it was a house. So this was like the, the outdoor, it wasn't all enclosed right here. And it's so cool in here with that. Uh, so this is the only room that has been modified. You can tell by the ceiling. Um, it's like the wooden stakes from when it was created in the 1800s, or built in the 1800s. So this room is our Gadsden room. It's where the Gadsden Purchase was signed. Um, on the wall, as you'll see pictures of it, obviously, because the Gadsden Purchase in here, so you see pictures of it. But this is where they all came and they signed it in this room. The Gadsden room features portraits of the negotiators James Gadsden and Manuel Diaz de Bonillo along with a copy of the Gadsden Purchase, which determined the current border of Mexico and the United States. So the Carlotta is our haunted room. Uh, it's your what? The okay. haunted room. Okay. So a lot of people have had experiences in here. Um, a long time ago, when this was a house, there's a bedroom in here, and the mother walked in on her son with the maid, and then killed them in here. So killed both be, of them? Yeah, in here, so it's supposed to be haunted. Everything shows the status to which the original family had risen and their intentions to maintain their social standings. The story goes that Senora Mays intended her teenage son Armando to marry an aristocrat. However, 
Armando fell for their teenage servant, Inez. This real-life Romeo and Juliet kept their relationship a secret. One day, the senora came home unexpectedly and caught the lovers in bed. She grabbed her scissors and stabbed Inez. Armando threw himself across Inez to protect her, taking the blade that was meant for her. Inez died in his arms, and he slipped into unconsciousness and died three days later. The tradition in Messia is that he died not of his wound, but of a broken heart. The ghosts of the young lovers haunt the restaurant to this day. Um, these chairs, I've never had any personal interferences with things happening. Um, I've seen a person sat in that chair and that thing will like, move, it's weird. Um, I know the chairs, they were not bought too long ago, um, but if you sit in them, they're super springy, like someone sat in them like forever. Yeah. So, and then over here you can see, this is a picture. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so this is a picture taken of three people and they're sitting in here and you can see an outline of a human standing right there or like wow. something standing. So that is from, um, that's like paranormal research. Okay. Um, that's photos. Yeah. Does that only happen in this room? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, that's photos. Yeah. Does that only happen in this room? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I just got chills. Yeah, no, it gives me heart. Like, ooh, what yeah. that happen? All right. <laughs> yeah. So that's that. <laughs> Is there any Thank you, Stephen and Sandy, who found me on the street with a camera and led me inside this story-filled building. Jamie was blown away by the flickering lights in the video that I showed him. He wanted to see it for himself. This turned out to be a great idea as we had the opportunity to dine at Pepper's Cafe, which is the patio area in the middle of the Double Eagle restaurant on the Billy the Kid patio. Whether or not you enjoy history and or ghost stories, this was one of the best restaurants we've dined at. Service was impeccable and the food was fantastic. Living in the West, I've had a lot of salsa in my time, but the complimentary bowl full was one of the best we've ever had. After lunch, we had time to visit the shops and read the history on the buildings facing the plaza. We also found an amazing artist with a story to tell. Hi there. Hi, how are you? What are you doing? Is yeah, this your art? Good. Only by the grace of God, but yeah. yes, it is. My artwork was birthed out of hardship uh, 16 years ago. I would have never slowed down long enough to draw a stick. Yeah, I understand. But, uh, I ended up, uh, I ended up doing a little jail time 16 years ago, and uh, man, I was locked up with with uh, some some great artists, and so I thought, well, I'm gonna be here for a little while. Then I started watching them. I developed, uh, adopted some of their techniques, nice. and I started producing some artwork. Once I saw artwork was starting to get produced in a place of hardship, then I knew that something neat was happening to me. Uh, some of my artwork, like this one on the right-hand side here, this one here is my signature art piece. I named it Ransom. Well, and this is looking down from the... Wow, from the, I see more every time I heavens, look at it. Upon the crucifixion, the shadow of the cross becomes this bridgeway, and the bridgeway is a gavel, it's a hammer of justice see that the hammer combines to the cross where we understand that the judgment took place right there at the cross this is a witness to the gospel and it's a confirmation that was given to me 16 years ago before i would have ever slowed down to draw that stick when an image of a gavel was impressed into one of my night dreams uh, my very first award winner was that grand canyon landscape those kids kneeling at the cross and that was a photograph this old black and white photograph was taken back in 1966, right there at the Grand Canyon. My dad was the cameraman. And so the kids at the cross are two of my sisters and I when we were, uh, when we were young. This was my first attempt at drawing uh, the Oregon Mountains here in Las Cruces. I never dreamt that it was gonna take me 13 months to complete. I said, okay. We're gonna start with the watercolors. And I started introducing the watercolor and it started to carve out its own pathway in the art piece. And all of a sudden, I started seeing these faces appear inside the yuccas. Yeah, I noticed that too. So I worked those faces in and, and this is what actually gave tribute to my tribal family. I'm a Tiwa by heritage. 
this one does. Of the Puro Manso Tiwa Indians. These are the three tribal families here in this region. Okay. I'm a Tiwa. There's been a battle to preserve this sovereign land for many, many years until just recently the Oregon Mountains became a national monument. This is the one that told me that art was going to become my future. Uh, when I saw the energy uh, that was captured in this art piece, I said to myself, art will have to become my future because the, the story will have to be shared. If you would like to support our channel, it's simple and won't cost you a cent. Just use and share our links in the description of the video below. Our affiliate links contain deals and coupons for you and a tiny commission for Roaming with Rosie. And you can be sure we only affiliate with products we use ourselves and recommend. You can also use our Amazon link for any purchases you plan to make from Amazon. The link is down below in the description and also on our website. If you like this video and you want to see more, make sure and hit that subscribe button. And ring that bell so you'll be notified each time we put out a new video. And make sure to leave a comment so you can be part of the conversation. Until next time. See ya. See ya.